Good morning, beloved saints. I really want to make this a message for everyone, but I'll, I may do a longer uh, video on it. I think I will. In any case, what I want to point out today is Hebrews tells us to look at the Old Testament. Remember everything in the Old Testament, including the law, the feast days and everything. They were all shadows of Christ and of eternal redemption. This didn't save anyone. The Old Covenant didn't save anyone. This was a t for temporal, temporal blessing and provision. And it pointed to the way, Jesus, this new covenant that Father and Son would make on our behalf with us benefiting as heirs. And uh, as I said before, anyone in that nation that rejected this eternal covenant was cut off if they believed they're grafted back in uh, but the mystery was that Gentiles would be joint heirs with the saints the Old Testament nation of Israel and of the same body same body not two Moses is a part of the body of Christ so use their lessons and apply them to our lives they are made for in samples is what it says an example for us so that we can see what God desires now God wants us to know that we have been redeemed that is the proclamation of the gospel he wants us to know that he wants us to trust in him that he has our best interest at heart it is not his desire to pour his wrath on us, to beat us, to kill us, to punish us, to find a reason to condemn us. But the opposite is he has good thoughts, thoughts of love, thoughts of uh, ways to prosper us, thoughts of uh, ways for us to be utilized for his glory and to have a fulfilling life with many brothers and sisters and a huge family and a great inheritance. But what we see Israel do is time and time again, God offers his loving grace, his kindness, free of charge. But they keep choosing to deal with God on their own merit. Now, all that can bring is condemnation and wrath. Because if you want to deal with God and have him be owing you for your goodness and service, you will find nothing but a curse. That's what the law was to do, was to make us all guilty. We're not perfect in our fallen flesh. And that's the point. We need a Savior. So it's really sad that people keep choosing this. Now, what I want to show you is that God doesn't want you condemned feeling. He wants you to know you have victory. He wants you to know you're his child. He wants you to know that he loves you. And wants the best for you. But time and time again. He brought us out here to die. To kill us and our children. That's what they thought of God. Over and over again. Manifested food out of literal heaven. Boom. Raining it from the sky. When that wasn't good enough. We want meat. We miss all the good food we had as slaves in Egypt. Okay. Well. I'll bring flocks of quail. So you eat so much it comes out of your nose. And he did quails came boom drop dead right in front of them there you go there's your meat eat it till it comes out your nose they they were always murmuring and then they wouldn't like why does Moses get to talk to God isn't so and so just as good and they turned against him same thing they do to Jesus why does Jesus think he's good it's a, it's a picture of turning against God's chosen anointed so, and anybody that goes, well, why does he choose Moses? Isn't so-and-so good enough? Clearly not, because you want yourself to be great. But it was a burden to Moses. He's like, I don't want this. He didn't want to be responsible for these people. It's always the one that doesn't want the position that's worthy of it. Because it's not for their glory. It's a headache. But they humble themselves and do what God wants. That's why you aren't chosen to lead. Because you would do it to feed your ego. So we can see this over and over again. 
They come against God. They think the worst of God. And we're supposed to look at this. So I want to take you to Hebrews 3. Whenever we're tempted to go, well, God hates us, or he let me suffer for this, or God doesn't cause this suffering, okay? He allows it because it strengthens us. It turns us in gold. It creates character. You ever met anybody that's had their way their whole life? Not fun, huh? Not, not great to be around. Spoiled toddlers. Everything's got to be their way. It'll drive you nuts. But people that have been through some stuff, they got patience. They got empathy, endurance, strength. There's a character to them. And while we're here, God uses these things to help us grow. But God wants the best for us. He redeemed us despite ourselves. You know, we get in our own way. So I want to show you this in Hebrews 3, all right? But Christ as a son over his own house, whose house are we, if we hold fast the confidence and the rejoicing of the hope firm unto the end? Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, today, if ye will hear his voice. Now, he's talking to the Hebrew people as a corporate, as a nation at that time. But you see like a divorce decree later. But Israel, true Israel, those that boast in the cross. It's not by genealogy. It's a Jew is one inwardly. So those circumcised of the heart continued on with Moses and the other saints as the foundation we're built upon with Jesus Christ being the chief's cornerstone. And then Gentiles joined them. So we're a holy nation as the church. And it's, it's unfortunate that, that people really could not see God's grace through all of this and know after he proves himself over and over again, then he wants the best for them. And he's for them, not against them. I would assume it gets a, it, it just horrible. It must break his heart. Over and over again. Water coming out of a rock. I don't mean like it trickled out. A, a five-story stone split in the middle and poured rivers of water for months on end in a desert for them. Pure, clean water in a desert. He, prov he provided out of nothing over and over again. So it says, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost saith, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. They provoke God, doubting him all the time, in the temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Years, yet they still scream in the same thing. He brought us out here to kill us and our children after 40 years. He brought us out here to die of dehydration. It, it, it must be so frustrating. If they would have just said, Lord, please provide for us here. You know our situation. Thank you, Lord, for doing that for us. Instead of, he brought us here to kill us. And our, it's just so frustrating, you know. Because it's not like he didn't prove himself over and over again. With these supernatural signs and wonder. It, it, the cloud by day to keep the heat off of them. A pillar of fire to keep them warm in the cold desert nights. Grace. Grace upon grace. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation. And said, they do always err in their heart. And they have not known my ways. See, people mis misunderstand that and think they didn't understand that he wants a strict law keeping. And to that's not what he's talking about. You don't know his ways. You don't know his heart is for you. You don't know he's moved heaven and earth for you. You don't know he manifests uh, provision out of thin air. You don't know he brings water out of a rock. A picture of the water of eternal life flowing from us through Christ the rock all pictures of Christ so I swore in my wrath they shall not enter into my rest so they were not allowed entry into the promised land they had to wander around in a circle till they died and then the next generation that would believe God and would believe his promise of taking the land they saw the obstacles and said oh we can't do this God brought us out here to die there's giants in there Meanwhile, the giants are shaking in their boots. We know the God of Israel. We're scared of him. He's already given that land to Israel. 
Rahab told him, we know uh, God, the Lord, has given you our land. It's yours. Before they even took it. They believe that's why it was counted to her for righteousness. She sure knew if God promised it, he was going to make it happen. So I don't know why when God makes it real clear over and over again, he saved us. He promised us everlasting life in Christ. He did all the work where you still got people over here saying, oh, well, don't trust that. Mm -mm, don't trust that. Uh, uh. You got to be shaken and scared. You got to think you might not get in. Uh, uh. You got to you got to do this and God's wrath will be on you. Quit talking slander about the Lord. He ain't tell you that. I, I'm so tired of it. Here, look at this. They didn't enter his rest. Take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. I'm sorry. Did that just say it's evil to not believe God is good. God has promised you everlasting life. God has promised to provide for you. He did the work so you can enter his rest. You rest because you know the work's been done to redeem you. It's evil to not believe that and enter rest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what that said. Lest he find in you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. So does it bring you closer to God to always question whether he did? The reason is because they're thinking salvation's about them. Did I do it enough? Did I have enough? It ain't about that. Jesus did it. He meant it. The only thing you got to believe it, receive it. It's it. Is it true or not? I don't know. Research it. Look at the evidence. Did it convince you? Okay. You better trust in him. God gave us all this evidence to support it. And if you don't know about it, look it up. That empty tomb sure is a problem for people. <laughs> and we know it because it's historically recorded that they never found the body. And 500 people at once saw him risen after his death preaching to people. 500 people. And at the time of that letter, most of them were still alive. You could ask their eyewitnesses. So, we know he promised everlasting life, and his resurrection proves will rise too. Why would you not believe it? Unless you think it's all about you and how good you are, then you got a problem. Because, yeah, then you could say, well, I don't know if I made it. Well, yeah, if it's about you, you wouldn't know. But it's not about you. It's about Christ and what he did. So, that's why we know we have eternal life. It's not the sin of presumption. It's only presumptuous if you save yourself. If you qualify by being good enough. Oh, I know I'm good enough. That would be presumptuous, but you're not getting in because you're good. You don't have anything to contribute. And I've said it before, and I love a, a preacher years ago. said, you have nothing to contribute except the sin that made him necessary to die for you to begin with. That's all you got. Your iniquity. Your helplessness. You can offer that. I'm helpless. I got to trust in you. So, an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. When you don't believe what God promised you, you don't enter into his rest. And that grieves him. Why are they telling you to do that? So, I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, brethren, lest any of you... Let there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily. So we remind you of how good God is and the promises he made while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. And that sin is unbelief. Unbelief. For we are made partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. See, that nation was going to depart from God. And this was the warning. Don't leave God when he's brought the promise to fruition. This is not individual salvation, by the way. That you're going to lose salvation. This is not. It's, it's talking to Hebrew people. Okay. <sighs> While it is said. Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. Howbeit, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved 40 years? 
So everybody in Israel didn't do this. Who was he upset with? Yet the entire nation suffered at the same time. Everybody, even the righteous, suffered because of that. Who was it? Was it not with them that had sinned whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? What was that sin? They would not believe. And to whom swore he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that what? Believed not. That was the sin. Yet they're telling you to question God. Straight out of the pits of hell. And they're going to come and tell you, once saved, always saved, the doctrine of devils. Okay, so believing God, taking him at his word, doing what he actually said he promised, and calling him a liar, that's better? Get out of here. See, it's foolishness. Foolishness to them. So we see that they could not enter in because of what? Unbelief. Unbelief. Plain and simple. Unbelief. That's what I keep saying. It's just plain and simple. They don't believe the gospel. <coughs> there you go. There's your answer. I don't hate on these people. I pray they come to the truth. But they need to hear it. Because it's wrong. And you're not only out here missing out yourself. You're shipwrecking other people's faith. And confidence who are standing strong in the Lord. You're pulling the foundation out from under their feet. And making them stand on sinking ground themselves. Instead of Jesus. He's the solid rock. When you're standing on him and what he's done, you're solid. You can't be moved. No thing come against you and you don't fall. But when you're standing on you, it's like, oh, no, I, I did do that. Oh, God's going to condemn me. I'm not quite good enough. Good. That's where you need to be so you can stand over here on the solid rock and trust and rely on the goodness of Jesus, not on your goodness. That's why our faith is counted for righteousness. For him that worketh not, but believes. So believing is not a work. Stop saying you're boasting because you believed. Cut that out. So believing is the opposite of working. For him that worketh not, but believes on him who justifies the ungodly. Not those who qualify, but the ungodly. Because even those that think they're godly, they're ungodly. His faith is counted for righteousness. Do not have a heart, an evil heart and unbelief in departing from the living God. Don't do that. We need to know God's promises are true. It grieves him when we doubt his promises. And he promises, whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. We're born of God. It's an operation he did. It has nothing to do with us, and it's irreversible. You can't put circumcised flesh back on in the shadow. You surely can't put our physical flesh back on a dead guy. It was removed from us when we were circumcised of the heart. This flesh, it's dead. We're to reckon it, it died with Christ on the cross, and one day we'll get a glorified body. We're just walking around in this dead guy for now. And that's a, you know, that's a battle flesh wars against the spirit it's just the way it is but to think that that it can be undone is insane insane how do you reverse a birth we were born of god god did it not us christ in us he lives in us we have already moved from death to life that life's eternal so don't have a heart, an evil heart of unbelief. Believe God's promises. Oh, you know what? There's, there's a verse. Hold on one second. In 1 John, let me just read this to you real quick. Uh, 1 John 3, 20. For if our heart condemn us, God is greater than our heart and knoweth all things. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then have we confidence towards God. So I'll sum it up with that. When you're walking around not condemned, you're not deluded. You have confidence towards God. You believe what he did saved you. You know you're in right standing. You have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. And tonight we got a letter saying we finally heard the new gospel. Now all he wants to do is go to God. Can I serve you? Can I tell other people the good news? All he wants to do is grow closer to the Lord. It doesn't encourage sin people. Do not believe these people. 
the truth of the gospel. It's God's power into salvation. They don't see that power because they're trying to make it make sense. You need to be punished. You got to be threatened to do the right thing. It's just sad. All right, you guys. Have a blessed day. Bye.